Welcome to day 652 of our Web3 journey. I'm Ed Krasenstein here with my twin brother, Brian. And remember, these videos are sponsored by The Social World. Yeah, so there's some news. Cyberpunk Apes number 90 was just awarded to a Diesel user, uh, Sewi Juga, yesterday. Um, congrats, congrats, Sewi Juga. I hope I'm saying that right. But this was one of the airdrops that if you... If you were participating in everything that Cyberpunk Apes has been doing, you were eligible. And uh, Sebu Jigo won it. Yeah, and it's a one of one. Uh, every 10 Cyberpunk Ape NFTs are one of one. So congratulations. Moving on. DSO user Catherine Holland said that she is designing the UI for a new Web3 app called Quaker.io. Uh, there's very little details out there, but it does appear that Quaker is going to be built on the DSO blockchain. I can't confirm with 100%, but maybe Catherine can reply to this video and let us know more details. Moving on, uh, DSO user Bright Sun posted that the experience uh, on Diamond is broken on the Brave browser. Uh, if anybody's familiar with the Brave browser, it's all about privacy. But apparently, at DSO, the Diamond app isn't working on properly on the bright browser uh he brave, said that brave this, browser brave browser i'm sorry he said that the signing key is asking for repeatedly um natter replied and he said that that jackson dean is actually working on this full time on overhauling uh, how the wallet stores your keys uh, so that should correct this issue if everything goes as planned um he's also working to make the experience smooth uh, no matter what browser you're using, this includes mobile, includes desktop, of course, as well. Yeah, and I've I've actually noticed on Chrome, BitCloud.com has some issues where after like three diamonds, it asks me to reapprove the diamond. Yeah. So hopefully that takes care of that issue as well. Uh, so there's an interesting post from Darian Parrish yesterday saying that quote being default alive is one of DSO's greatest strengths. He said that while we criticize Natter, a lot of the community criticizes him for not hiring fast enough, not for growing fast enough. The move actually looks pretty genius right now, given that we have over 12 years of runway left and we're in this lengthened bear market. Uh, with that said, however, Darian also said that there is always a way to dial, to change that dial between conservation and growth. It doesn't have to be all conservation or all growth. He thinks that the dial should be slightly turned more toward growth. He thinks now is the time. Um, and that would be, of course, at the expense of a, the runway, but not much. You know, you could take maybe six months off the runway and really expand growth at this point. Uh, Natter replied and he said, quote, I think the key thing in my mind is growth doesn't necessarily mean spending a lot of money. For example, Polygon has spent billions in advertising, forcing projects to use them, et cetera. And yet every conference I go to, it seems more people have used BitCloud than have used something built on Polygon, even though we spent zero dollars launching it, other than the cost to build it. We approach growth by asking what we think will move the needle 1000x in terms of awareness. And often it comes down to running relatively cheap experiments like our Milk Road newsletter blast, our upcoming messaging app launch, our upcoming verifications overhaul, or our upcoming Princeton startup competition via Open Fund. So that's interesting. He's talking about some stuff that's coming up that I think should get people excited. The messaging app launch. It appears that DSO is actually working on this. I don't know if uh, DSO Messenger's in the picture anymore or not, but it seems like Diso is kind of taking it over. Additionally, Natter said that that said that once we move to proof of stake, transaction fees are going to be burned as opposed to paid to miners like they are today. So that should have an ability to increase the, I guess, the supply of Diso, which should hopefully increase the value of Diso if things go as planned. Interesting. What do you make of that? The proof of stake. Taking transactions yeah, I'm, and burning I'm, ex I'm excited about that because it, cause it will basically mean that as DSO grows, it's going to burn more and more DSO coin. So 
if DSO becomes the next Facebook, it's going to be burning a tremendous amount of DSO coin eventually, meaning that that the uh, deflationary rate of DSO would continue to go, rise on an upward trend. And that is great for the underlying cryptocurrency, the, the DSO coin, of course. So this has me really excited. I think that it means that when DSO does grow, you're going to see exponential increases, maybe not exponential, but you're going to see very large increases in the DSO coin. But also if your move to proof of stake, doesn't that mean it's going to become inflationary? So that wouldn't that deflationary just kind of cancel out the inflation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's going to depend on exactly how the proof of proof of stake works. But th that's a good point. But you also have to realize that as that happens, the user base is increasing and you need you need DSO to be able to transact on, on DSO. You need a DSO coin to be able to transact on DSO. So people are going to be accumulating DSO as well. Uh, it's definitely going to be an interesting, uh, I guess, lesson in economics, crypto economics once proof of stake is out. Cryptonomics. Uh, and also Natter said, that's not to say we're adverse to spending money. It's just a tool that we haven't needed quite as much as one would maybe expect given our treasury size. And he also said that mega swaps might generate some revenue. The, the plan wasn't really to have it generate revenue, but it appears to be doing so. And if it does generate significant revenue, they're going to try and find a way to have that value flow back into DISA, which I think would be really awesome as well. He also mentioned possibly doing a DAO something a DAO around mega swap so what we'll you just wait and see he said it's too early to really decide on yet there's a lot to look forward to for sure uh so many of us are going to be be able to say hey we were here before all this this craziness happened at least i hope and 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 i think that i think that he brings up good, good points natter i think that there's definitely there's definitely a need for marketing but I think that it's also needed that the technology be able to keep up with the marketing. Uh, so don't market, don't start spending a ton on marketing until you're really ready. And hopefully that's coming soon. Uh, I do agree with Darian that I think there's it, there's probably a space between Natter's spending and Max spending where it's probably a happy medium. And I'd like to see them spend a little bit more, uh, but we'll see. Yeah. So yeah, so <clears throat> moving on, DSO OG scrutinized, I'm not laughing, I'm coughing, uh, was hacked. And he, he wrote that he needs help from the DSO team uh, to get a new seed phrase back uh, or completely delete the account and shift his verification to his new scrutinized account. I believe that he got his old name back, but the verification just obviously didn't shift to the new name he used because it's attached to that old name. Uh, so he just wants some help there, I think, from the from the core team. But uh, it's scary, especially if he had a lot of assets in that account to get hacked. Um, hopefully he didn't lose anything or at <laughs> least not much. Um, but protect your seed phrases at all costs. Yeah, I, I think he got most of it out. I think he got his NFTs out at least. Um, I don't think he needs a seed, a seed phrase anymore because he created that new account. He just needs the verification to be moved over to his new account. So maybe the core team can help him out there. Of course, verifying that he really is his new account. I, I guess he it could be a, somebody pretending to be him or the hacker pretending to be him. Who knows? But anyhow, I, I, I think that would be nice to see him verified again. And as many of you know, NFTZ.me is the only place where you can view and post live time DSO NFT auctions. Just go to NFTZ.me forward slash auctions. You can see a list of all those auctions that are ending soon. I want to highlight a few that are ending in the next 24 hours. Hippie Kitties, number 22, ends today at 1240 p.m. Eastern time or so. Uh, really cool NFT. Dwarf Monsters, number 220, ends today at 4 p.m. Eastern time. It's just 3, 0.3 DSO minimum bid. So pretty pretty affordable nft there and jai chai has an nft from his non simulacra series up for auction really interesting nft that ends at 10 p.m eastern time today yeah and i quickly want to get to the top 10 nft bidders on the diso blockchain over the last day according to nftz uh they are as follows uh steadfast llc j happy meta philosopher generative zian mead johan holmberg La Big Mac, PK, BitCloud FR, and Darian Parrish. 
And the top diamond the creators of the last 24 hours, thanks to our friends at Alton Base for this list. These people receive the most diamonds or tips on their posts and replies on the DSO blockchain in the last 24 hours. Design stuff was number one. Congrats. Followed by Striga, Panini, Now and Then, Jay Happy, Goldberry, Story, The Social World, Clout Women Unite, and Sean Slater. Congratulations. And that's all the news we have for today. Everybody have a great rest of your Saturday. I got to go get some cough medicine now. Yeah, go take some.